All right, so Florence Pugh's latest movie, The Wonder, is now on Netflix, and no wonder you click this, because this psychological drama is a heck of a weird period piece. But in this video, we're going to be breaking down the story, explain the ending, of course the fourth wall breaks, our reaction and review, along with touching on some of the themes and messages cleverly tucked away in Wonder. Now, if you enjoy this video, then hit that like button as it helps the channel and allows me to go one more day without food. Hey, I'm fasting here. And also, don't forget to subscribe for breakdowns, recaps, and other videos like this every day. With that out of the way, a huge thank you for clicking this. I'm your host, Jared. Now, let's get into the video. All right, so a quick setup of the plot reveals Mrs. Elizabeth Wright, played by Florence Pugh, is a nurse from England who has been called to a secluded Irish countryside in 1862, nearly a decade after the Great Famine. In doing so, she, along with a nun, have been hired by a committee of elders in the town to investigate a unique situation, if you will. A young girl named Anna, who seemingly hasn't had anything to eat for nearly four months. This oddity, some might even say a miracle, is at the center of this film. Why hasn't she eaten? Does she not have to eat? Is she a plant and solely lives off of chlorophyll now? More like borophyll, right? With the elders calling in a nurse and a nun, it is an interesting dynamic between science and religion, especially one's beliefs. What do you believe is actually happening with this young girl? What story are you going to take to heart? Now, this whole idea of belief is almost in everything in The Wonder. It's centered around it, essentially. Hell, even the opening, breaking the fourth wall moment, the narrator tells us this is a movie. To believe in the character's stories with complete devotion. We are nothing without stories, and we invite you to believe in this one. Believe me, pun intended, but I was instantly confused by why they were showing the behind-the-scenes workings of film production with this ethereal music. However, it instantly grabs you, allowing you to believe in what you want about this. Everyone has a story. I know, a very snooty, mm, I went to film school, ooh, look at me, feeling behind this, but it instantly tells the audience to believe, which you do because seconds later, we're right there smack dab, immersed on a ship setting with Florence Pugh's character. And the power of belief brings her to the committee, who believes that Anna is a miracle, people traveling long distances to see her because they believe in what Anna is, and Anna believes that she is atoning for something much greater. You get a belief, you get a belief, everyone gets a belief! I'm gonna drop a bombshell on you though, but uh, yeah, Anna is uh, full of sh**. Though she and her family claim that Anna has flourished for roughly four months without a single piece of food is straight up poppycock. It's revealed that her mother, when giving, you know, morning and goodnight kisses, essentially baby birds food into Anna's mouth. Chews it up and spits it right in. Though sneaky and tough to see, the belief of this miracle child living off of only the manna of heaven is straight up false. This is only realized when Elizabeth prevents Anna's parents from any sort of contact with her. Surprisingly, cases like this are drawn directly from historical events. Emma Donahue, the best-selling author of The Wonder, from which this movie is based on, studied roughly 50 cases, with a majority of them relating back to the religious practices of penance. Sure, some of them were looked at as heroines of their time, religious miracles like Anna's case here, but I'm gonna chalk them up as the first influencers of the medieval times. Wilt thou subscribeth to thee, fans only? <laughs> anyway, the reason in doing so, again, derives from belief. Anna believes if she prays 33 times a day, you know, Jesus' basketball number, and she atones, aka fasts, that her late brother will be released from hell for what he has done, making his way to heaven. Earlier, the family states that the brother went away and died during the war, something Elizabeth again believed. But in reality, he never actually left, instead fell ill after he and Anna were married, assumed that, you know, they had the parents' blessing. Anna called it double love, and that's not actually a good thing. The love of a sister and a wife, so um, believe me when I say this, but it's some pretty f***ed up sweet home Alabama sh But Anna's parents don't seem to care that now she is slowly withering away because they believe... 
There's that word again. That in the process of losing a child, her atonement for her brother's sins will allow both of them to enter heaven. She even goes as far as saying that life is short, but the next life is eternity. Her children will be in heaven. Believing in something that isn't entirely there doesn't fall solely on Anna, but Elizabeth has stories of her own. Earlier, she mentions that she's widowed, hinted at her husband dying during the war as well. But before each night, she is seen taking some sort of liquid hallucinogen, showing off her tiny baby boots, and pricking her finger, drawing blood. Another fact or fiction hint, as it's later revealed, she lost her baby, and then that caused the husband to leave. Her nightly tradition is just dealing with the heartbreak and even a way of still kind of feeling something, you know, from the self-harm. In a sense, she doesn't want to believe her reality. Now, at the end of things, Nurse Wright comes to the conclusion that Anna is going to die. She's tried everything, even shoving a feeding tube down her gullet, which I, I'm going to be honest, was not a pretty sight but instead persuades Anna through a different narrative and the power of belief that has, you know, been the common thread or theme through this movie. Anna can save her brother while also being reborn as a nine-year-old before any of these horrible events from her brother had happened. The liquid hallucinogen dopes up Anna, taking her to the holy well for an almost baptism in a sense. Nurse Wright watches over the death of Anna and then the rebirth of her new identity Non. I guess you could say, na 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 na, hey, hey, hey. Okay, that was a bad joke. But I thought this name was actually a shorter version of Anna, but non actually means grace. In grace in Christianity means a couple of different things. The spontaneous unmerited gift of the divine favor in the salvation of sinners. So Anna giving herself for the salvation of her brother and that of the nature of human depravity and regeneration. So through the perverted acts of her brother, Anna fasted and is now reborn as a new spirit. And finally, that of the relation between grace and free will. Anna, or Nan now, has the free will to live her own life. This is seen at the very end when she's adopted by Elizabeth and Will. Both had lost their families and instead now start anew. Anna begins to eat at the end of her own free will, something that was different from, you know, the past four plus months that she had been living before. There is a final bit of storytelling and belief themes when Elizabeth has to meet with the committee about what happened with Anna and the house burning down. Though all of the evidence is very much against Elizabeth with her being the one that started the fire, even though she claimed that it was an accident, and it's odd that no remains at all, no bones, nothing, of Anna can be found. The committee believes her story, pays her, and allows her to head back to England. This is all closure for Elizabeth, though, allowing the past of her husband and child to burn away, and she, like Nan, is reborn with this new life. Now with Will and Nan sailing off to Sydney, Australia to do whatever, you know, Australians do. Let's put another shrimp on the barbie. Before we wrap up, we gotta talk about the fourth wall breaks and the questionable ending. Obviously, the opening of this movie is a behind-the-scenes look at this movie, the raw set of it all, with the narrator urging us to believe the story. Well, the narrator is Neva Algar, who is actually playing Anna's sister, Kitty. And throughout the movie, she mean mugs the camera a couple of times, even reminding us that we are nothing without stories. Nana looks at the camera when registering her name on the boat, subtly hinting that this is her story, before ending with the same turn to set, break the fourth wall bit with Algar whispering. In, out, in, out. This on the surface ties back to the Thama trip Anna is given earlier of the bird and the cage. Is the bird free or is it trapped? In, out, in, out. Meaning Anna was the bird. Heck, she was even being fed like a bird from her mother. But this is her story. And she was able to get out of this abusive, manipulative, religious-based situation that she was trapped in with her family. It's a miracle she is now free. But if we blow this symbolism out to the real world, which I believe, ah, <laughs> see what I did there? 
Neva Algar being dressed in modern clothing shows us that these stories are happening today in many different avenues to many different people, not necessarily just religion-based scenarios. And it's our job to believe in their stories to allow them to no longer be trapped. The Wonder really surprised me with the deeper meaning here. Honestly, from the get-go, I thought it was just a solely like religion versus science anti-COVID movie. I know, it's very stupid. I, I'm, I'm an idiot. But the way they slowly held out this carrot and allowed us to follow the story, deciding on who we should side with, was done so well. It's both a period piece with a relevant message, but also a heck of a mystery, picking up on all of these slight details and those clever fourth wall breaks. I thought Florence Pugh was fantastic and really hit on those emotional beats of the story. I love her work and she killed it. I mean, well, she didn't she didn't kill the girl, she saved her, but uh, you know what I mean. Anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts on The Wonder and if you too grew up with parents baby birding food into your mouth or, or was that just me? And I'll let you know, we're currently running a competition right now, giving away three copies of House of Dragon Season 1. Ooh, hoo, hoo on the 15th of December. And all you have to do to get a chance of winning this is like this video, make sure to subscribe with notifications on, and drop a comment down below on The Wonder. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month, and the winners of last month's competition are on screen right now. So if that's you, message us on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch, be sure to check out our other videos right over there. Our 1899 breakdown video is insane. You, you've got to watch this show and go check out the breakdown. But with that out of the way, thank you for your constant support. I've been Jared, and I'll see you in the next one. Na 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 na. <laughs> All right, uh, goodbye now.